hello, and uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much that um, I got this opportunity. And um, yeah, I, I will try to explain a bit what, how this whole thing um, affected me and how it started, and uh, so you maybe get an idea of how it is to be the chosen artist to collide with uh, science. Um, it, was, it started um, when I saw the um, uh, email, um, the open call, and I had like one day left uh, before the deadline, so I just uh, said, okay, I have no chance to get it, but whatever, I just have to try, because I, I always dreamed of, of, of going there, and so I just uh, um, did this five minute video where I just explained why I, why I want to go there. And um, somehow they um, selected me to come over. And that was uh, a big surprise for me. And um, then I started about actually, okay, what do I actually expect from, from going there? And uh, yeah, like, and uh, it's, um, actually not so easy what to expect. Like I, I was knowing that I'm definitely, I want to go there because I was dreaming of that place since so long. Actually, I'm reading science magazines and, and uh, thinking about particle physics was always a big inspiration for me. And uh, of course, huge technology is also something that uh, makes me feel happy. Like if I look at big machines, they make me feel happy. And uh, so, and speaking to scientists and, and also, I was knowing that that is a thing that I like. So that seemed to me like to be the best place for me to be. And, um, but what, how do you collide art and science? Um, it's just being interested at something is not already like colliding it. Um, and uh, so, I, I went there for three days um, in January, and um, uh, 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 Jana Kirk um, gave, gave us a great tour together with um, Horst and Matthew from um, us. And um, yeah, that was just uh, three amazing days. Like I, 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 got in, I got underground to the um, huge machines and uh, saw a couple of, of labs overground and that was just I don't know I, I can't I couldn't believe it and I, I spoke with scientists that told me about this hidden world somewhere and I was just starting to dream and I, I couldn't fall asleep at night because I was so amazed by what I saw and what I uh, I heard and then uh, two months later I came back for um, uh, staying for two months and then I had everyday meetings with uh, scientists and uh, um, like once or twice a week I was um, having a look at, at a, uh, another experiment. Like they're not, there's, they're not only these huge experiments, they're also smaller experiments, overground, and just endless. And um, it's, yeah, and yeah, so that's just to make you understand maybe how it's all started. And um, then, of course, I also worked on, um, on my work, but actually um, most of the time I spent with uh, speaking with scientists and thinking about what I just heard and reading and writing. And actually it felt kind of wrong to really work on, my, on, on a piece because I feel I need all the time to actually, like this, the, the time is, were so much being there that I, yeah, try to s just spend all of the time thinking and discussing. And um, but yeah, at, at um, Oka here, there's um, now a work exhibited that I um, proposed in the uh, uh, proposal for the um, open call, and then I worked on it while I was there and uh, realized it um, in the last months. And now it's hanging here. And it's, it's maybe one example of my way of, of um, doing art that is 
it's not scientific. It's not art and science at the same time. I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'm an artist, and but I am interested in science and um, especially in particle physics and especially in these really, really small things or even large or they don't even have normal scale anymore and um, uh, that you cannot put in normal images, that your brain is not made for sensing it. Um, extra dimensions, you're not able to think about them properly because your brain is just made for three special dimensions. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to make art that is maybe able to show something that is hidden in these small worlds that maybe a sculpture can, can make, make it accessible that wouldn't be possible with words or um, with an image. Um, yeah, it's, um, there are particular two works that I want to show, like um, the one that I installed here at, at, um, at Orkar, but first another one. It's, a, it's, it's not yet realized, like most of the works that I worked on there are not realized. Maybe most of them are not realizable. Like most, that's, I don't know, maybe a lot of other artists know that's um, the problem. Most things you think of are just out of, like they're too expensive or it's not legal or uh, it's just not possible or uh, it would be harmful for someone or for yourself. And, um, or it would just consume so much energy that, uh, yeah, it's just not, no one will support it. And, um, so most ideas I had were like that kind of ideas. And, um, <laughs> but I think as an artist, it's your job to actually make stuff like that real. Like to, like to do the ideas that everyone is saying, no, that's not possible, and just trying to make it real. And one day you maybe get one of those real and then you made something new, not just the ideas that seem to be easy to realize. Like that's, that's, those are not the ideas that I am interested in. And um, yeah, but let me just show this example for, for an, an apparatus that I think, um, yeah, that I thought of. Or first, first maybe another one that I, um, that's a, a self-revolving torus. Um, yeah, it's, that it was not so hard to build. But actually, it's just a model for a huge uh, floating one that is uh, floating in the sky and turning inside out. And um, yeah, that's, that's inspired by um, uh, the shape of the universe that I never understood. It's supposed to be more dimensional than three. And it uh, could be a torus. This is a three-dimensional torus. A four-dimensional torus is something different than a three-dimensional one. But it's not so easy to imagine a four-dimensional torus. So this is just a ridiculous try on um, showing how a three-dimensional torus is trying to be a four-dimensional torus. Um, yeah, and the next um, object I'm, I thought of with these dimensions is um, uh, um, hypercube. Um, a hypercube is just a four-dimensional cube. And um, yeah, <coughs> it's not possible to, to make an image of it because it's four-dimensional. But you can make a three-dimensional projection of a four-dimensional thing, like you can also draw on a paper, a drawing of a cube. You don't have the cube on the paper because the paper is two-dimensional, but the cube is three-dimensional. So you can draw a two-dimensional version of a three-dimensional cube. And the same thing you can do with a four-dimensional cube. You can make a three-dimensional perspective of it. You don't have the whole thing, but you have one perspective. And then you can make a two-dimensional version of that three-dimensional perspective. And that's what we see here. And it's turning, so you don't only have one perspective, but you have different ones. 
And um, at the moment, from this perspective, it's looking like uh, um, two cubes in each other turning in a circle, but that's not the case. If you change your perspective, um, it's something different. It's uh, two. It's a uh, four-dimensional torus uh, cube turning inside out, and um, I don't know if you can see it. Um, And if I turn it to a special angle, like this, it looks again not turning inside out, but it's just a change of perspective. And um, I'm planning to build something that is exhibiting this phenomena that you um, just have to change your perspective and you uh, see something totally different. And um, also, I, yeah, I, I just like this moment where your brain is thinking to see something, but then it's losing it again. And um, because that's always what I have when I try to think about more dimensions. I get it for a second, and then it disappears again. And I, really, I never really get there having a proper image in my brain. And this moment where you, where you are at the edge of what your brain can think of is really interesting for me. And um, yeah, that th those inspiration came out of like trying to understand um, uh, physics um, that are beyond like our like the Newton world where everything is easy to um, imagine. And um, yeah, so this is not yet realized. I want to make a, a cube that is um, size of a human. Like my head would be in the center of this cube here, and then it could just move around and turn, turning inside out and moving in space while it's doing that. And um, yeah, so I spent a lot of time uh, thinking about that thing. And um, but now uh, I want to talk about the work that I realized. Um, it's um, Yeah. Um, it's uh, four hanging lights. They don't necessarily need to um, be like that. Um, they could be any lights that are hanging somewhere. There were no lights hanging in Oka, so I um, installed these because I, I like them. Um, but it's about the movement. It's not about the lights. That's, that's why I'm, I'm saying that push the lights so they start to swing. And uh, each of the lights has a different length, the, the length of the cable that it's hanging on. And the um, resonance frequency of the whole hanging light changes by the length of that um, cable. And um, yeah, so if you make the cable a little bit longer, the time it needs for one spin around is like, uh, a millisecond longer or something. And um, it shows the length of the cable so that um, when the first light makes 75 circles, the second light makes 76 circles, and the third light makes 77 circles, and the th th uh, fourth light makes 78 circles. So um, every 78 um, cycles, they all seem to be in harmony because they all made the same, like a full number of circles. So that's where you have a um, harmonic image. They're all swinging together, like, like in this moment. And, um, but most of the time, they're not in sync because in between, after uh, 20 cycles, they're all like a bit off and forming a chaos. And um, it's not real chaos, but it seems to be chaos because you're not able to compute these four different frequencies and put it back together and see that they're just slightly off. Uh, it just looks like that, that they're all in chaos. And this is, again, this moment where um, you're trying to 
understand the movement and you think you understand it. Here you might think they're all connected with some, some elastic thing, so that's why they form this wave, but they're not connected at all. It's just the length of the cables that make them seem to be connected. Um, so if, if it would be, if one, centimeter, one cable would be a little bit longer, the whole thing would just look chaotic all the time. And, um, and so, from, for me it's about this moment between seeing something, understanding it, and then losing it again and not understanding it. And I think there's some, some part in your eye that is doing this. It's not a, um, a thing that happens in your um, Bewusstsein. It's more a, a subconscious um, thing that your eye is always connecting two things that move like this. You think they are one thing, and if it's moved like this, you think it's different. And um, yeah, and this is happening with the lights all the time, that they seem connected and not connected. And um, yeah, and in, in, in turn, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's always a search for what is the connection between things we see. It's, um, uh, we can sense something, we can make an experiment, and we get a result, we get numbers, and, but what is the meaning of these numbers? Um, uh, and that's maybe, yeah, the work that I'm really interested in is like how can you interpret uh, what you see and what is hidden behind what you see? Because uh, we know that what we see now doesn't really make sense if you look in detail. There must be some explanation behind it that we don't know yet. And if you find that explanation, there will be another problem with what we see, and then we have to find a new explanation for that. So it's always finding some relationship that fits, finding some um, law that works, and then uh, losing it again because you look closer or the situation is changing. And um, yeah, I'm, this installation is trying to show that on a large scale level, but not conscious, but more subconscious in your eye. Um, what can I, yeah, it's, um, I actually haven't time to actually look at it because it just finished two days ago and I spent the whole month on making it uh, work together with an, uh, Martin, she um, Martin Sheed, an um, assistant who helped me. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's enough talking about it. And um, yeah, there will also be different uh, movements. It's not just this, but yeah, let's maybe start the um, round table discussion.